DC Multiverse! How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to my channel and to my speedy review of the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Calabac action figure. This guy is big. How big is he? Well, here he is next to Superman. And here next to Batman. The eldest son of Darkseid and the half-brother to Orion, this is one large hunk of fourth world meat. He kind of looks like a warthog, only if it was a man. Look at that face! McFarlane, with this figure, did the face perfect. Absolutely perfect. I can't think of anything, I can't see anything that I would change about the look of this Calabax face. It's like a near-perfect rendition of this character. I mean, sure, there are some details on this character that could have been continued to be painted, but for something that has minimal paint apps, and it's mostly sculpted in the colors that it's supposed to be, this is fantastic. This is a budget Calabac, and dare I say, it is the best Calabac that we've ever received to date. Between the textures, the mix of the gold, green, and yellow, all that detail in the hair. If you're a customizer and you really want to add some paint detail to the gold here, the bandolier that goes across his chest, and the little decorative piece of shoulder armor, and possibly to his belt area, you know, and the little flaps from his, I don't know, his dink protecting wang flaps, then you can do that. But I think he looks great the way he is. Here's a close-up view of Calabac's Beta Club, and yeah, a fantastic job has been done on the Beta Club too. It's kind of skishy. Like this, this is made out of a softer, rubbery plastic, and not something that is really hard. And once you've skished it between his rock-hard fingers, it fits really nicely. As for comparisons with other Calabacs, I am going to compare him to the classic. OG DC Universe Classics version of the character. This, at the time, was, in my opinion, the best Calabac we'd ever been offered. And it still is a pretty solid figure, if you ask me. It's still a fantastic version of the character. It looks so Jack Kirby, it looks so fourth world. I still love this figure very much. But the new one here is definitely an upgrade. Also here he is compared with the Injustice Gods Among Us Dark Side action figure from Storm Collectibles, the Collect and Connect Dark Side from the DC Universe Classics, and here we have a shot with Dark Side and Mongol, both from McFarlane on either side of Calabac here. Like I said, dude is a beefy figure. Now with all that bulk just hanging around, one might wonder exactly how articulated this Calabac figure is or is not. Dude's head, it's on a ball peg, and that gets us a surprisingly good range of motion. Like, it's very wibbly. However, you will find that that big old beard gets in the way of it looking down. I don't know many people that are hoping that he can look down. I mean, what? But there's clearly no torso articulation. So I'm, you're expecting a miracle if you're hoping that this guy's going to have a lot of forward range of motion. And that kind of goes with the territory. They could have put an articulation cut right here, but I think that would have actually ruined the aesthetic of the figure. He would have no longer looked like your beer-drinking uncle with that huge, thick, massive torso. And he wouldn't have looked like somebody who could pick up monster truck tires and throw them across the field. However, the waist is actually fairly articulated. It doesn't, you know, really look down and up that far, but it does offer you know, a, a range of motion, albeit it's a little limited, there is definitely a range of motion there. Of course, as is Todd's way, he offers the rounded hinge in both the arms, but you do have these decorative shoulder pauldrony things that are going to get in the way of a little bit of that range of motion and just look generally silly when he's got his arm raised. But the intended amount of articulation is fairly good, and that is without activating, you know, the rest of the articulation there. That's just testing out what he gets with the hinge. He's got that single jointed elbow and, ooh, okay, you guys know what I like. If it's at least 90 degrees, I'm happy. I do wish that this had more, but it does actually turn right here at the elbow, which is definitely something that I always like to see. And there's, of course, the big hinge you can see right here in the wrist. He's got very odd knees. I mean, I actually do like these because then you know, you can't really see the articulation point that well. The wrinkly kneecaps sort of cover it. But I'm not thinking I'm going to try to get him in any ballet poses, any super hyper poses, because he's Calabac, and 
you know, I don't know, he's a big character. I just don't imagine him doing that. Down here, looking up his can, we can see he's got the same thing as all the rest of the McFarlane figures. That clickety hinge down there. What does he get for this? Always, oh, the question, oh, that's so good. Yes, that is what I like to see. That is a great range right there. And then traveling back down the leg to the ankle, we can see it goes forward about that, up about that, with the toe. Oh, that's a broken foot. You're gonna have to go see a doctor. That's what you get for kicking soups in the shins, you idiot. And that is all. So what do I think about this McFarlane Toys giganto Calabac action figure? Is it yay, is it nay, should you get it, should you leave it? Is it good or is it garbage? Well, if you're a DC fan, if you're a fourth world fan, if you love Jack Kirby stuff, this is gonna be the Calabac so far to end all Calabacs. And by the looks of it, he can't wait to club his way into your DC multiverse action figure collection or at least Superman he definitely wants to club Superman but yeah that is my review of the McFarlane Toys DC multiverse Calabac action figure and I will see you next time with the next one have a DC day everybody and as usual take care